morning. Well, I guess it's good afternoon, and I'm very cognizant of the fact that I stand between you and lunch. So we'll talk about uh, some of the clinical applications that we've been working on and uh, a little bit of history of how we've come to the applications that we, are, we currently have available on what we're working on and let's see, let me use this guy. And what's the clinical practicality or how do we use these? So you've heard a lot about um, the opiates that are available, how we can use them in our cancer patients and pain patients in general. But we often find that patients respond to the different opiates in a very different effect, both in terms of efficacy and adverse events as well. So we are often clinically in the position of having to switch opiates or to try one versus another or to try them from an IV route to an oral route. So this, when we do this, we use the concept of equal analgesia, which I'm going to talk a little bit about, but that's what our applications are designed to help the practitioner and the clinician use and use the application to um, incorporate the equal analgesia concept into their patient care. So this is a very common scenario where you have a young patient that you're seeing in clinic with persistent back pain, currently taking Percocet, which is an oxycodone Tylenol preparation, but needs to take two tablets every two to four hours for pain, but still currently rates his pain a seven out of 10, which would denote more as severe. So what recommendations or how would we change these, this regimen? Well, there's a couple things about this regimen that you as a clinician would be, begin to question. Here's a patient with persistent pain, and this is assuming we know their etiology and all of, all of that. But here's a patient with persistent pain, but we're only providing an analgesic that will give them three, four hours of relief at best. So we've already set the patient up that they're going to have to take something every three or four hours. It also has a Tylenol or acetaminophen component, so we need to worry about the total dose that the patient is taking of that per day. So could we not provide this patient either a different opiate or a long-acting formulation with a short-acting opiate for breakthrough? So we can do this very simply by c continuing the oxycodone, or we may switch to a different agent and use the concept of equal an analgesia to get there. So this is done commonly in pain clinics, inpatient, outpatient, all the time. So you would think clinicians that work with patients in pain, and pain is the most prevalent symptom that brings patients into the healthcare system. So you would think we were all well versed in, in doing this very simple, as you'll see, very simple math application, and how to incorporate it clinically into our patient care. Well, a study was done at Hopkins a few years ago, and actually was several years ago, because the example was meperidine, which has completely fallen out of favor uh, for the most part in terms of acute pain care. But this was done at Hopkins where we gave this scenario of a hospitalized patient receiving meperidine 120 milligrams IM, which has also fallen out of favor, so that also indicates how long ago this was, every three hours. Now, they want to switch this patient to an oral regimen of hydromorphone and what would you prescribe to give, uh, of the hydromorphone to give approximately the same analgesia. So this was given to house staff at Hopkins, so well-trained, well-educated house staff. They were allowed to work in groups. They were allowed to use a couple of different references at the time, the Washington Manual and the PDR. And so they just had to quite literally fill in the blanks. How much hydromorphone, how often orally would you give this patient? What do you think the percentage of correct answers was? Just shout it out. 20% less, about 15% got it correct. And that's with reference, that's open book working in teams, <laughs> all right? So then, a very simple intervention, this is how you, uh, this is what equal analgesia is, this is how you incorporate it, this is how you do it, and uh, after that intervention, give them the same scenario, the same uh, references, and then we got more uh, positive response, 85% could actually get the, the correct answer, which uh, the correct answer is uh, hydromorphone 3 milligrams orally about every three hours. So it's this concept of equal analgesia, what is it? It's really that um, 
a different dose of two different opiates really provides approximately the same analgesia or the same pain relief. We use this when we're converting between different agents or we're staying with the same agent but converting routes. So a patient is in the hospital, just had surgery, um, <clears throat> has been on an IV PCA pump, patient-controlled analgesia pump, now it's time to go home, it's time to transition them to an oral regimen from home. Um, importantly, patients may be now coming in on chronic pain medicine, now having a procedure, needs only uh, needs IV PCA after the procedure, it's important to know what that dose that they were on at home converts to, to we, so we give them adequate pain relief. Uh, by and large, morphine 10 milligrams parenterally, uh, which means IV, IM, or the subcutaneous route is considered the standard. And then we have this concept of incomplete cross-tolerance, which means there's a lot of interpatient variability in uh, how folks respond to the different opiates. Even though the receptors are basically the same, although we're finding that there are subtypes to the receptors, patients respond to them very differently, and I'll talk about this a little bit more. But this is the basic concept of equal analgesia. So going back to that patient case I first presented, which is actually very straightforward, but this is just the simple math that's entailed in doing equal analgesia. Now the trick is the math is only a portion of it, right? The math only tells you the number, and then you need to use your clinical acumen to figure out what it means in this particular patient for what you're treating and why you're making the conversion. So often we convert to morphine equivalents. In this patient, you would look at the oxycodone. There's no equal analgesic conversion ratio for acetaminophen. You can see how much the patient's been receiving of oxycodone. And there is a long-acting oxycodone, so you may fold that all into a long-acting oxycodone. But you can see I set up a ratio to convert it to morphine. And the 30 milligrams, let's see, and here's the ratio. So 30 milligrams of oral morphine is roughly equivalent to 20 milligrams of oral oxycodone. So where does that come from? Well, uh, before we get to that, let's talk about a couple of other reasons why we switch between drugs before I take you to the equal analgesic table. So I, I mentioned one scenario, a patient is in the hospital receiving parenteral uh, PCA or parenteral opiates, now it's time to discharge. So the route of administration may have to change to something that's at home, oral, transdermal, transmucosal, et cetera. Uh, it may be a cost issue. There was just a question about cost. There's a whole range of costs for these medications. Uh, morphine's been around since ancient times, but you put it in a fancy delivery system and now you can charge several hundred dollars a month for it. Uh, so deter cost may be a, a determination or a factor in switching. Unresponsiveness. We keep escalating doses, but patients are, a patient is not responding to the increased dose of that particular opiate. So we often talk about rotating opiates to see if that interpatient variability and in how everyone responds to opiates, can we use that to our advantage and use a different opiate? Or we may be running into side effects, very common side effects, nausea, vomiting, sedation, that we can't adequately control. And so we want to try a, a different agent to see if the patient responds better to that agent. Excuse me. Yeah. Just a quick question. In adults, are we still using one standard adult dose, or are we calculating milligram per kg of adult weight? Usually in adults, um, we still start out with some st standard dosing, uh, starting doses. That is not the case in pediatrics with, uh, I believe, Dr. Yaster and Dr. Kostbeierle will talk about uh, pediatrics after lunch. In adults, we usually do not use weight-based. But you would use this concept in a patient, for example, that comes to you already on opiates or a history of chronic opiate exposure or use. Okay. 